says the teacher wearing a math nerd shirt. Maybe the portrayals of nerds are accurate in that show. Ah, anyways. Lindsay, today is going to be nothing new. I'm not going to be teaching you any new rules. I'm not going to be teaching you any new equations. All I'm going to ask Courtney is, hey, what if there's more than one mass? What if there's more than one mass? But first, uh, I have here mass against the wall demonstration. Let me pause the video for a second. Okay, here's the book. And let's assume that I was pushing to the right, just so our diagrams all look the same. Cohen, what were the forces acting on that book? Get the obvious one. Was it sliding down? What, sorry, let me, can I say it in physics? Was it accelerating down? Was it accelerating up? So there has to be a force up, and it has to be exactly the same size as gravity. Which force? I'm not sure yet. Can I come back to that? Then I was applying a force that way on the book. Was it sinking into the glass? Was it flying off of the glass? So there has to be exactly the same size force this way. What force was that? Connor, what? In fact, you can kind of imagine that a wall is just like flipping the ground 90 degrees. It can also apply a normal force the same way a ground can. Now that we've called that the normal force, anybody want to guess what that vertical force is? Sarah, I think you said it. Maybe I'm not. I thought I saw, thought I saw your lips move. Oh, it was where? Eric? In other words, could I do that if instead of glass it was ice? It'd be pretty tough. Ice has a tiny bit of friction, so I might be able to. I, like, I'd have to, like, well, let me s be even more obvious. Look up. Sorry for those of you on YouTube who can't see this. I guarantee what are the forces acting on this book right now? Okay. Which way am I squeezing? Upwards? No. Inwards. I'm applying an applied force to the book. A normal force is pushing out against my fingers. Which way is friction acting? Up. If this was an ice block, do you think I could hold it this way? This is why ice is so tough to hold. But also, I'm relaxing my fingers right now. See if you can spot, I'm relaxing, I'm relaxing. See if you can spot exactly when gravity becomes bigger than friction. See it? You see it? I can feel it. Uh, what really happened is the normal force became so small, and friction is mu times the normal force, that it can no longer create a big enough force of friction. But, to counteract gravity. But th you've taken this for granted. Whenever you've carried something and you've just grabbed it and squeezed to hold it in your hands, when you haven't done this way, but when you've literally just been counteracting gravity by pushing inwards, you're doing that free body diagram, which is kind of a cool one because you can feel it. I'm relaxing my hands. Uh-oh, I got trouble right now. Okay. Now, if instead of a book, if this was sandpaper, I probably wouldn't have to squeeze as hard because I have a higher mu. If this was ice, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah? So, Courtney, that was just to get you thinking a bit more about how friction uh, is used in our life. Uh, all Teflon, you guys have all cooked, all those non-stick skillets do, Teflon has a mu near zero. There, well, it's not gonna stick. And you can try that, uh, rub your fingers on it and you'll feel it's pretty slippery. All right, many body problems. In these problems, we have more than one mass, several objects connected by strings. The easy approach is to realize that we can treat the system as a single object because all parts are accelerating at the same rate. Say what? If we have objects connected by strings, someone tied this into a knot. Note to self, yell at the kid that did this. Not right now. Come here. Ay, 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 ay. Works better when this works, Mr. Duick. Did I just make the knot worse? I hope not. <laughs> there we go. So, these two masses are connected by a string. If I accelerate this mass 
at two meters per second squared to your left, what would the acceleration of the bottom mass also be as a magnitude? Can they accelerate at different rates? Only if I do this, and I'm not going to do that. If we have smooth acceleration, what we want to realize, Alicia, is if objects are connected by a string, their acceleration is going to be the same. We're not going to allow you to give it a big yank and give it a big jerk. Okay? Is that all right? What that means is we can include both masses in the same equation. It's easier just to jump in and do one. Example one says, find the acceleration and the string tension. And I think I can make this a little bigger. Oh, not that big. Here it is. In example one, is there friction? Uh, how can you tell? And this is maybe obvious, but I want to make sure you notice. How did I tell you that there was no friction? Okay. You see, uh, go and see it. Yeah. This is my way of saying ice. Okay. How many masses are there? I'm going to call the first mass M1. You know what I'm going to call the second mass? M9. No, yeah, M2. That would make way more sense. That would make way more sense. Okay. Ready, Matt? Let's look at mass one, the three. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Now I'm going to call it M1G. Because I don't want to have two MGs and get them confused. Is that okay? Is it sinking into the ground like... Is it... Look, uh, what else? You notice this time I shortened my little mantra. What else? What other forces are acting on this? A normal force? You know what? I'll call it normal force 1 to go with mass 1. What else? Friction? No. Which way is this mass accelerating? So there has to be a force to the right. Oh, you know what's accelerating it? The rope. What do we call the force from a rope? We've given that a special name. Tension. Those are the three forces acting on mass one. Cool. Hedrick, what are the forces acting on mass two? Get the obvious one. I totally agree. I'm going to call that M2G. What else? I'm going to call that Normal force number two. And I don't see any vertical forces, so I think normal forces and gravities are identical, right? They cancel each other out. What else? Well, I got this 20. We've typically called this the applied outside force. Friction? No. There is one more. There is one more. Tension is actually slowing this mass down because it's, what's really happening is uh, this tension here is applying a force on this, but it's applying a force on the rope. This is actually a Newton's third law. Forces come in pairs. Okay? In other words, when there's more than one mass, you'll usually have two tensions. Prith, who's winning? Which way do you think this thing is accelerating, this whole system? Who's winning? To the right. So let's start off on the far right. Who's winning? Which force? Yes. And anything that's pointing to the right is going to be a winner plus. Anything that's pointing to the left is going to be a loser minus. Okay? So we're going to walk all the way down the rope. I'm going to ignore the vertical forces. Those are imbalanced. I'm just going to do all the way along the rope. So ready, Prith? Let's generate our equation. Who did you say was winning? Uh, you know what? I think I got room right here, don't I? Oh, I was going to do that. I got room here. Ha. F applied. And then this tension right here, is it pointing in the winning or in the losing direction? Minus. Right? This tension right here, is it pointing in the winning or in the losing direction? Plus. Have we reached the end of our rope? Yep. What does that equal? What has it always equaled? What does winner minus loser always equaled? Here's the tweak. Is there more than one mass? Yeah? The mass of all of them times A. 
uh, three plus two. It's good. I'm going to put a five there. Hey, um, Prith, what's negative t plus t? Do you know why I find these equations so relaxing? Because you always lose tension. Oh, man, I like that. This is like a spring break vacation. Ah. Prith, what did this question want me to find? What was the first thing it wants me to find? How would I get the A by itself? How would I get the A by itself? Just tell me. Yeah. What I love about this, Courtney, is usually you'll end up with very clean equations at the end. The setup is tricky, but the acceleration is going to be the applied force divided by, and you know what, Prith, I'll write m1 plus m2, because that's what the mass of all of them means. Okay. Alicia, you okay with that? Alicia, how big was the applied force? Yep. How big was mass one? How big was mass two? Alicia, what is 3 plus 2 in your head, please? Hey, I can do this all in my head. What's 20 divided by 5? I cooked the numbers to make it work out nice. I'll even go to 2 sig figs because it says 3.0 and 2.0. I'll go 4.0. Alicia, it's an acceleration. What are the units for acceleration, my angel? Yep. Lindsay, you give me more than one mass. I'm going to start out still by labeling all my forces. Nothing new there. I'm still going to go winner minus loser, but it's going to be equals uh, the mass of all of them times A. And the reason I can do that is if they're stuck on the same rope, they've got to accelerate at the same rate. Oh, because I'm not going to let you jerk the rope. I'm not going to let you all be jerks. Rebecca, what was the second thing they asked me to find? It said find the acceleration and tension. So I wrote here to find the tension. So to find acceleration, we look at the whole thing, but we treat it like one big uber mass. To find the tension, we look at one mass. So I'm going to look at mass one right here. What were the forces acting on it? Do you remember, Rebecca? Get the obvious one. And that was M1G. What else? Normal force number one. Yes? And what else? Tension. Which way is that three kilogram mass accelerating? Who's winning in this picture? Who's winning? Which force? Which way is it accelerating? To the? So which force is winning in this picture? Ah, what, what, what? OK. Who's losing? Uh, it's a trick question. So tension equals, what does it always equal? Am I looking just at one mass now? So I'm not going to do mass, but which mass? Rebecca, do I know how big mass one is? How big? Do I know the acceleration? Ah, I just figured it out. So are you telling me that the tension is going to be are you telling me you can do that in your head? I bet you could. How big is the tension? There's our strategy. To find the acceleration, Alex, we look at all the masses at once. Tensions will cancel. To find a single force, we go look at one mass. And here's the nice thing. It doesn't matter which mass you pick. We could also have gotten the same answer with mass 2. Really? Yeah. John, what were the forces on mass 2? Get the obvious one. Yep. What else? There was a normal force number 2, right? Uh, there was this applied force of uh, 20. And I'm missing one. What was the other one? No, no friction. Yeah. Which way is mass 2? Accelerating, John. Which way is my winning direction? Same answer. 
So which is my winning force? Yep, yep, yep. Sorry? Winner. Is there a loser this time? Oh, yeah. Minus tension. What does that always equal? MA. Which M this time? Mass number two. It does, you, we're going to get the same answer when we solve for tension. You're going to find it doesn't matter which one, which mass you pick, although sometimes one will be easier. You'll notice, Rebecca, here, we actually ended up with tension by itself right away. Here, John, what's right in front of the letter T? Uh, oh, we've done this dance before, have we not? Where we plus that there and at the same time minus that there. Handy little trick. So, John, the applied force drops down like a domino. Minus M2A. Apparently, that's going to be tension. And I'm hoping that this also works out to 12 newtons. Let's find out. John, how big was the applied force? Minus. How big is mass 2? What was my acceleration? Does that, by chance, also work out to 12 newtons? Woohoo! Now this is kind of going to let us go rock climbing and hang stuff over cliffs. Why not? Is that okay? If we have a hanging mass and no external force, well, look at that picture. If this is on wheels, and that's my way of saying no friction, I'm pretty sure this 2.5 kilogram mass is going to go down, and this is going to get pulled to the right. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, what does example three want me to find? The acceleration and the cord tension. Sheldon, I'm going to start out by labeling my forces. Are you ready, my friend? Uh, let's, by the way, I always let, I start from left to right. I let the first thing I see be mass one. I let the second thing I see be mass two. You don't have to do it that way. It's just, if you look at my answer keys, if I do like a handwritten answer key, that's just my habit. So let's do mass one first. What are the forces acting on mass one? Sheldon, get the obvious one. Is there more than one mass? Then I'll call it M1G. Is that okay? What else? Yeah, you'll notice I'm giving you a little less hints now. I used to say, is it thinking, into, is it flying into, yeah, normal force. What else? Yes, the rope. Friction. Do you know how I'm showing the wheels, okay? So I'll do it one of two ways. Either I'll tell you it's on ice or that mu is zero, or this because I'm stealing these diagrams from all over the internet because I suck at graphics, or if I find something with lovely wheels like that. Oh, that's frictionless as well. Okay. Uh, hey, what are the forces acting on that 2.5? Get the obvious one. I'll call it M2G. What else? Is there a normal force here? Matt says, no, he's right. Are we on a surface? Are we sitting on the floor? So is there a normal force? No. Is there a rope? Oh, what else? Pointing which way? Yeah. And I'm going to, again, argue same rope, same tension. You can't have two different tensions in the same rope. It's impossible. It can't be done. You can't pull one side of a rope harder than another side of a rope. That's a consequence of Newton's third force coming up here. OK. Is there any way that this can be going up and to the left? No. So who's winning down and right? In fact, you know what's moving this thing? Uh, that weight right there, because weight is another word for mg. So anything that ends up, when I follow it around the pulley, anything that ends up pointing down is going to be a winner plus. Anything that ends up pointing up is going to be a loser minus. Okay. So, who's winning? Sheldon, my friend. Yes, that's going to be our starting point. Good. And then I walk along the rope. This tension here, winner or loser? And by the way, you're seeing, even though up last unit was always positive, it's much more convenient for us in this question to let down be positive winner. 
This is why I go with the tug of war analogy. Because to the right is technically positive. Anyways, sorry, what'd you say? Loser? Don't call me that. Oh, oh, you meant the force. Got you. Uh, now, this tension here, when I follow it, when I follow it, when I follow it, when I fo which way does it end up pointing when it gets over to here? So it's going to be a winner or loser? Winner, plus. Have I listed all of the forces along the rope? Now, by the way, you might say, hey, Mr. Duick, we didn't use these normal forces at all. You'll use them when there's friction, but otherwise, they're just placeholders. Why will you use them when there's friction? Because friction, new times a normal force. Okay, but for now, I'm putting them on there because as a nerd, I don't want to leave any off, but they're not showing up in my equation. Uh, equals, what does that always equal? Is there more than one mass? So really, you can either write m all, or if you want to, you could say m1 plus m2 times a. I flip-flop. m all is shorter to write. m1 plus m2 reminds you that you're going to add them together. For some reason, sometimes kids think they times the masses. I don't know. 6 plus 2.5 is times? I don't know. Anyways, is that OK? Hey, Sheldon, you going anywhere for spring break? No? Well, you can relax right now. You know why? Oh, you're losing tension, baby. Ah, I'm in my happy place. Oh, OK, back. Um, what's the first thing they wanted me to find, Sheldon? How would I get the A by itself? Yeah. This also, Courtney, comes full circle. This is why I told you I can't give you a one-size-fits-all equation, because here's yet another one. What I can say is I can tell you an approach that will generate the equation, and then you can use formula manipulation to get whatever you want to get by itself by itself. Is that what you just told me? I think so. What's M2? What's G? 9.8, not negative. We took care of that with the arrow. M1, 6, 2.5. These 2.5s don't cancel. Or, no, sorry. Uh, is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? Maybe brackets, although I don't think I need them, but you might check. But definitely with two things on the bottom, that, then I always need brackets. The reason I can be sloppier on the top is by default, your calculator will assume numbers are supposed to be on the top. So you can usually get a bit sloppier up there. But it won't ever assume things are on the bottom. So let's open my calculator. It is, I think. Do this one in your head. Sadly, this one's uh, yucky. It's going to be 2.5 times 9.8 divided by bracket 6 plus 2.5. Yes? Now, built-in error checks. Andy, if we cut the rope, what's the biggest the acceleration could be if we just cut the rope? 9.8. This is slowing it down. It's providing some drag. So built-in error check, you better not get an answer bigger than 9.8. If you do, you've done something wonky. Things don't fall faster than free fall. I don't know how useful that is. Well, it lets you know if you've made a typo, Haley. Okay. Uh, 2.88, yes? Yeah, yeah. Sheldon, 2.88 what? Good. Hey, folks, let's cleverly call this part A. And then we'll call chord tension part B. B. Lindsay, what does B want me to find? OK. I can use either mass. Let's do it with mass one first, the 6. OK. I got my free body diagram still on my screen. So which way is the 6 accelerating? Who's winning? Who's losing? It's a trick question. Nothing. Kids want to put like MG. Or, no, those are vertical. They're not in the same direction as the rope. So who's losing? Nothing. Equals. What does that always equal? MA. In this case, are we looking at all the masses, or have we just written forces from one mass? Which mass? Mass number? Oh, M1A. 
it's going to be 6 times 2.88. Uh, conveniently, I still have the 2.88235. I have that on my calculator. So I'm going to use my answer button and times it by 6. Uh, tension is 17.3 newtons. Is that okay? Hey Courtney, what if I wanted? To, what if I use the, the the second mass? Okay, we can do that too, and we'll get the same answer. Courtney, look at the sec. Which way is the second mass accelerating? Up or down? Right. It, this whole thing is being pulled over the cliff. Right. Is that okay? So which way is the second mass accelerating? Up or down? Down. Who's winning? M two g. Right. Who's losing? Well, let's try writing that equation and see what happens. Uh, by the way, that one looks really weird. So I'm going to write here. Or you could go M2G minus tension equals, what is it always, what does winner minus loser always equal, Courtney? Well, MA, in this case, M2A, right? What's right in front of the tension, Court? What's right in front of the tension? I, oh, we've done this dance before, have we not? Uh, plus that there, minus that there at the same time to get the T by itself. I get this, M2G minus M2A, that equals tension. I wonder if that'll work. M2, 2.5, G times 9.8, minus 2.5 times 2.88, do I also get 17.3? Yep. Uh, I rounded off this time, so I don't have all the decimals. Which one's correct, Mr. Duick? Yes. No, Mr. Duick, which mass should I use? Yes. They're, they're both fine. Although, Lydia, you'll notice one of them was easier, so usually what I try and do is I'll try and see each equation in my head and see which one is the least amount of writing, which is lazy, but that's how I roll. Yep, quick like a bunny. Hey, we can even handle friction. Okay. Uh, let's call, uh, find the acceleration part A, tension part B. Now I want you to realize, and Courtney, this is important because you, I was talking to you a bit earlier. Look at this system. Is there any way that somehow magically this mass on its own would start pulling to the left and lifting this up? I don't think so. The only way, either nothing's going to move, maybe, or this mass is going to pull this down and pull this over. Okay. So earlier when you said, uh, up, do you see why I kind of looked at you? Well, no, there's no way, there's no force pulling to the left here. Everything is to the right and down. Is that okay? Okay. Sarah, you're ready? We're going to do this one together, you and I. Um, it says, find the excel. You know what? Let's label our forces. And I think I can make this drawing a little bit bigger. Yeah, that'll work. Sarah, this 3.2, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. I totally agree. I'll call it M1G because there's more than one mass. What else? Yeah. I'll call it normal force number one to go with Mass number one. What else? Yep. Like you're feeling right now. What else? Is there friction in this question? How do I know? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make it pretty clear. I, or the question will actually say, assume there's a coefficient of friction of blah, blah and I'll say it in the description, but it's going to be there somewhere. Uh, which way do you think this thing is sliding? To the? So which way is friction acting? To the? Okay. And I'll call it friction force number one to go with mass number one and normal force number one, just as a handy dandy keeping everything numbered the same stick. Hey, what are the forces acting on the 2.8? Get the obvious one. Is it on a surface? Oh, I'll call it M2G. Is it on a surface? So is there a normal force? No. What else? OK. Do you remember at the very, very beginning of this, 
I said to you guys, I'm not going to teach you anything new today. I don't think I have, aside from saying you can combine the masses, but having given you a new equation, it's still, hey, get the obvious, uh, who's winning, minus, all that stuff. Is that okay, Sarah? Sarah, who's winning? I totally agree, which means when I follow this, anything that ends up pointing down when it gets over to here is going to be winner plus. Anything that ends up pointing up when it gets over here is going to be loser minus. So let's write our equation. In fact, I'm going to put part A right here, M2G. Now let's walk along the rope. Sarah, what can you tell me about this tension here, winner or loser? Loser. What can you tell me about this tension here? When I follow it around, it ends up pointing down. Uh, yes, winner, you said? Are there any more forces? Oh, there is one more force along the rope. I can't, by the way, I can't call these horizontal or vertical forces because these ones are vertical, these ones are horizontal. I tend to call them along the rope or not along the rope. Friction, when you follow friction, which way will it end up pointing when it gets to here? So is it a winner or a loser? Which one? What, which, what, what did you decide was the winner here? It's a loser. Friction's a loser. Friction, you are such a loser. Have we included forces from more than one mass? Yeah. So on the right-hand side, it's going to be m1 plus m2 times a, or m all times a. Sarah, is he alive? Is he alive? Give him an elbow for me, would you? Oh, he is alive. Okay. Wakey, wakey. Ah! No? Oh, I got Matt. My, you know what? I need to look at who I'm... Anyways. Matt, did I just scare you a little bit? Why are you getting all relaxed right now, though? Why are we relaxing right now, folks? Oh, I like that. I bring it and I take it away. I wish I'd planned that. That just happened. To, the timing of that was a total fluke, but I'll take that. I may even build that into the lesson from now on. Sarah, what are we trying to find? How would I get the A by itself? Okay. So if I hear you, my next line, the M2G drops down like a domino. Yes. And the minus... Friction 1 drops down like a domino, and underneath it all is going to be M1 plus M2. And I'll put, do you, I put the A on the left. I stuck it in over there instead. Do I know mass 2? Yeah. Do I know G? Yeah. Oh, friction is what times what? You know what? We need to break this up a little bit more. So I'm going to put an equal sign. This is going to be M2G minus. What were you going to say, Sarah? And I guess normal force number one, because it's friction force number one, all over M1 plus M2. Don't! I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. Sarah, which force is the same size as the normal force? Which one? Because I got two of them. Can you read me the whole thing? 1G. Yeah, because I said which force? M1's not a force. It's a mass. A M1G. So if I hear you, we can now say this. A equals M2G minus mu M1G. And I think I know all of those. I did a quick check of variables. I know them all. Uh, Sarah, is this a fraction? Is there more than one thing on the top? Uh, brackets. Is there more than one thing on the bottom? Uh, brackets. And this is one I strongly encourage all of you to try on your calculator during this lesson. This is a chance for you to figure out how to type this. The numbers are going to be M2, 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 2.8 times 9.8 minus 0.12 times 3.2 times 9.8 all over 3.2 plus 2.8. Do 
Did I give you guys the whole, oh, I gave you the whole page. I didn't need to write this small. You know what, Mr. Duick? Then let's cleverly go like this. Yeah. Let's move this over to here a bit. That'll work. So Mr. Duick says, bracket around the top, 2.8 times 9.8 minus 0.12 times 3.2 times 9.8. Close off the bracket, divided by bracket around the bottom. I think this might be an OK decimal, because the bottom, oh, no, no, never mind. I thought the bottom worked out to 5. It works out to 6. It's going to be a yucky decimal. Repeating, though, yeah? Oh, eventually. Uh, 3.95? Yeah? 3.9461333333333. I'll go 3.95. Okay. Yay! Well done, Sarah. Woohoo! What does part B want me to find? Tension, you say, Matt. OK, I guess we're going to bring back the tension. Shall I yell again to scare you? No, let's just do it in terms of physics. So part B. I can either find tension from here or from here. Now, it looks like each of these has two forces. Two forces. Which one's going to be less work? This one's going to be easier to get the t by itself, because t's a winner. But I'm going to have to do the mu times. This one, t's going to be a loser, but it's m2g. Honestly, it's, a, it's, it's really a toss-up now. So which one do you want to find tension with, mass 1 or mass 2? Mass 2. OK. Looking at mass 2, who's winning? Which way is mass 2 accelerating, up or down? Who's winning? Which way is mass 2 accelerating? So who's winning? That's a, not, that's a mass. I want the Who's losing? So what would the equation be? And now we're only looking at one mass. Which mass are we looking at now? M2a, right? Because now i got multiple masses, and I'm only looking at one now. So again, what's our approach to find acceleration, Lydia? Look at both masses, because they're stuck together by a string, and that's why there's uh, m1 plus m2. To find an individual force, look at one mass, whichever one. Matt, how would I get the t by itself? Oh, we've done this dance before, you and I, haven't we? Plus that, minus that. So if I hear you, you're telling me tension is going to be, what am I going to write as an equation? Yep. Yes. Uh, well, I've scrolled down. M2, 2.8 times 9.8 minus 2.8 times 3.95. Although I'm going to use my answer button instead of 3.95, if that's OK, because I can. 2.8 times 9.8 minus 2.8 times 3.95. Do you get 16.4? We can even handle more than two masses. I think this is the last one I'm doing, yeah? Yep. Told you this was a shorter last lesson. By the way, I also hope, because I brought friction into this, that this is also clarifying some of the stuff from last day and last day's homework, which many of you still haven't tried. OK. Hmm. How big, Connor, is this mass? How big is this mass? Which one has gravity pulling on it harder? The 8. So do you think it's more likely that everything is sliding this way or that everything is sliding this way? I think that's winner. OK? And I'll make it pretty clear. All right. You ready? Here we go. Um, this, uh, 
I think I put a couple in your homework. This is physics 12. Okay? More than two masses is physics 12. But just to show you that we can handle it, it's really a pretty easy extension. Uh, what are we going to do now? Oh, by the way, let's call this part A. Let's call that part B. I'll do that next time. Hey, Alex, my friend, what are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious one. I totally agree. Uh, can I call it M1G, and I'll call the middle mass M2, and I'll call the right-hand mass M3? Okay. What else? Is there a rope? Oh, so what do we call that there force there? Tension. Hey, wait a minute. Is there more than one rope in this question? Two ropes? You know what? I'm going to call this tension one. You know what I'll call the other rope, boys and girls? Tension eight. Uh, two. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, two. Good. Okay. That's it on that mass. Connor, this one here, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. So I'm going to have M2G. What else? Definitely a normal force because it's on a surface. I'll call it normal force number two to go with mass number two. What else? Which way? There's two of them. There's two ropes. So tension one and tension two. In fact, what's pulling it forwards is tension two. What's pulling mass one up is tension one. What else? Is there friction in this question? Yeah, I was a real jerk. I put friction in here. Which way? Yes. My argument is friction's not going to make this tougher. It's just going to make it longer. <clears throat> OK. Hey, Jin, what are the forces acting on this one? Get the obvious one, my friend. I totally agree. I'll call it M3G if that's OK. Oh, how about writing a 3? M3G. What else? Yeah, which tension? Tension number? Two, same rope, yes? So I'll, I'll assume those are the same. Whew! This is going to be a long equation. Connor, coming back to you, which way did you say was winner? To the right. And so anything that ends up pointing that way is going to be a winner plus. And I'm going to start there then and work my way along the rope. So talk me. What am I going to write? Winner. Then I run into tension two. Tension two, winner or loser? Loser! To do that, you say that with such vitriol. And then G2 is a better oh, when I follow it, when I follow it, ends up being a winner. Oh, I changed colors for some reason. OK. And then what about friction? You know what, by the way, I'm going to call that friction 2 just to go with force 2 and mass, uh, normal 2 and mass 2. It's just me being fussy. But yeah. uh, what, Friction, winner or loser? Do you call me a loser? You have such a detention. Oh, no, no, uh, the force. I get you. Uh, minus friction 2. OK. Oh, because this tension 1, when I follow it, when I follow it, when I follow it, when I follow it, see, it. although it looks on this side like it's up, and it's going to be a loser. When it gets to this side, Ryan, you got to use your imagination, but you can see it'll end up pointing down and be a winner. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you said uh, plus tension 1. And that's going to equal m1 plus m2 plus m3 times a. The mass of all of them times a. Why is Mr. Do it so relaxed? He's losing tension twice, isn't he? I'm getting a double helping of no tension. Oh, every question is like a vacation. This is great. Mr. Nowak. What, Cohen? Q 
Can we just stop, skip writing them? I, I encourage you to write them on your big Uber equation because it gives you a good systematic way to make sure you haven't missed any forces. And honestly, the nerd within me smiles every time I do this, and I do get a happy feeling every time I lose tension. It's sad, but true. Connor, what are they asking me to find? How would I get the A by itself? Yeah. Okay, the bracket's uglier, but it's, it's the same math, right? So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're telling me A is going to be... Right? And the M3G is going to drop down. And then a minus friction for... Oh, friction. Friction is what times what? So this is going to be mu times normal force number two. Minus M1G. Okay. Let's do a quick check. Connor... Do I know M3? Yeah. Do I know G? Yeah. Do I know mu? What's mu? I don't know. What's mu with you? Oh, yeah, I know mu. Ah, I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. Which one? Hey, let's substitute that in. It's going to be M3G minus mu M2G. And this is where those normal forces do start to appear in the equation. Minus M1, G, all over. Now, in your homework, Matt, after doing a few of these, you might feel comfortable enough to take a few shortcuts. And as long as you're checking your answers and getting it right, I'm good with that. I'm showing every step in our notes so that when you're studying later, you know what the heck my reasoning was. You can even, if you want to, make a little arrow saying friction became mu times the normal force in the next line. Or if you're comfy with that substitution and you spotted that, that's fine too. I think now I know everything. I think now it's plug and chug. I got lots of room still. Good, 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 good. M3, 8 times 9.8 .8 minus mu, 0.25 times 9 times 9.8 .8 minus 1 times 9.8. All over 8 plus 9 plus 1. Whew! Hey, Connor, is that a fraction? And I think, you know what? Brackets around the top, brackets around the bottom. By the way, what do I know my answer is going to be less than? It's going to be less than 9.8. If I don't get that, I've messed up typing, right? 8 times 9.8. Minus 0.25 times 9 times 9.8. Minus 1 times 9.8. Close bracket. Divided by 8 plus 9 plus 1. I could have done that in my head and just written an 18 there, I think, but whatever. 2.5861111111. sorry, 2.59. Yes? Are we done, Hedrick? We're done part A. What did part B want us to find? You know what? Let's draw a little line down the middle like this. We'll find one tension on the left and one tension on the right. Which mass has the most forces on it, Hedrick? Uh, two. I'm not using that one. You can, and you will get the right answers. I'm not using that one. So let's look at mass one to find tension one. Hedrick, which way is mass 1 accelerating, up or down? Because we let winner, oh, oh, okay. So look at mass 1. Who's winning? Who's losing? Minus M1G. And I said we're just looking at mass 1, so it's going to be mass 1A. Hedrick, how would I get the T1 by itself? How would I get the T1? I, I know 
Just tell me what I would do first of all. Okay, look up, pause there. While we're at it, let's call this part C. Right hand mass, Prith on the right hand mass, mass three, who's winning? Minus, who's losing? That movie was on yesterday, Terminator 2. Uh, equals M3A. You can see, in terms of level of difficulty, these equations are pretty similar. Oh, uh, Prith, I think here we've done this dance before. I'm going to plus and plus. And he, yeah, Hedrick, you're right. I can minus and minus. But my argument, again, at the very beginning of this lesson, I said I'm not going to show you anything new. I don't think I have. All we've done is really take what we've learned to the next step. Okay, uh, let's find tension one. Uh, Hedrick, you were right. You said tension one is going to be M1A plus M1G. Uh, M1 was 8. A was 2.59. You know, I'll carry some extra. I'm going to go 2.5861. Plus 8 times 9.8. .8. These will be different answers because it's two different ropes. Uh, tension 2, uh, Matt, you and I did this last time as well, right? Plus that, minus that. It's going to be M3G minus M3A. That equals tension 2. Uh, M3 was... No, M, wait a minute. I got the wrong mass here, don't I? I was going... Wait a minute. Mass 1 is 1, isn't it? Sorry, I was looking at my equation. I didn't scroll up. That was dumb of me. Mass 1 is 1, right? Which really means I can do that in my head because 1 times each of those is... It's really going to be 9.8 plus 2.5861, which I should be able to do in my head, but okay. Uh, mass 3, that was 8. Is that right? Sorry, guys. I didn't scroll up. I thought I could go from memory. Uh, 8 times 9.8... Minus 8 times 2.5861. Let's see what I get. 2.5861 plus 9.8, because timesing by 1 isn't going to change anything. 12.4 newtons and... Fifty-seven point seven newtons, which really that makes sense. This left-hand rope, Cohen, this one, all it's pulling is that one kilogram. It's not going to have a big tension. This right-hand rope is having to accelerate the middle mass and the one kilogram mass. Yeah, it should have a way bigger tension. Oh, as well as it's supporting this mass here. Which rope is more likely to break? The right one, okay? You guys got it okay? Oh, sorry. Eric's back, stretched, he's awake. Okay. I'll bring this back up in a second. But I want to give you, I was hoping to give you 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Number one. Okay. Number three, I'm going to skip two because one, two, three, and four are all the same. So I'm only going to assign one and three. If you're getting the wrong answer, if you're having trouble, uh, two and four are identical. You can try them too. Oh, no, four has three masses, doesn't it? I'll skip four. Five. Um. I think I like number five, I like number five, I like number... F I, I'm pretty sure on your test, which I typed up last weekend, I did put... By the way, this is the physics of rock climbing. Really what you have here is, here's the climber dangling, here's his partner. Now in real life, the partner does have friction, he has cleats, and is able to support the rock climber. I'm not going to get into that, but it's kind of cool. So a five is good. Six is good. I'm going to put a star next to number seven. Number seven is very, 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 very tricky. If you get number seven, you impress me. 
Uh, I'll give you one like number eight like we just did. There's your three mass system. Number nine. Ready? What does that mean? What does at rest mean? What equals zero? A equals zero, which means it's going to be winner minus loser equals zero, which is a nicer equation. What am I asking you to find in number nine? Hey, what's mu? So see if you can get the mu by itself. It'll be a little nicer because it's going to be winner minus loser equals zero. I haven't done one like this. Again, I can't come up, I can't cover every possibility in the lesson. I got to throw it at you a little bit as well. Same with number 10. 12 gets a star. It's optional, but if you want to impress me, I took this from an old physics 12 provincial exam, but you now have the skills to handle it. In fact, I took it from the old scholarship section, which was meant to be the ones that kids competed for the money for scholarships for. And also finish lesson.